My name is Capella Kirst, and I am the founder and CEO of Gecko Materials. Our disruptable technology is the next industrial Velcro, highly reusable and extremely versatile, all while saving energy, time, and money. Hello, I am the founder and CEO of Gecko Materials. My name is Capella Kirst, and this is a full bottle of wine held up by Gecko Materials. As I turn it over, it falls off under its own weight. Let's pick up some other objects, shall we? I have this nice little pomegranate. I just placed down the material. <laughs> placed down the material. Oh, <laughs> decided to fold on itself. It picks up, holds. You need both sides to attach. We'll explain the slides in a second. What about this really rotten tomato? You can see how, how rotten it is. It holds it, falls off under its own weight. Those were all curved surfaces. Some of our customers are interested in some flat surface gripping. So let's, cameraman, would you mind zooming in on this? You pick up this wafer. These are four opposed tiles of gecko materials, each held in sheer. As I turn it off, on, off, on. You can actually see it engage and disengage. Quick and easy, disattachment. Now let's head to the slides so I can explain what you just saw. Traditionally, to attach two objects, you need glue, tape, or suction. Gecko Materials is none of these. It's not a glue, it's not a tape, and it's not suction. It's truly a disruptable tech. Let's see Gecko Materials in action one more time. You can attach and detach over 120,000 times this one inch towel supporting 15 pounds vertically. For reference, you can only do Velcro 2,000 times. We can attach for seconds, days, or even years to smooth and micro smooth surfaces. Some of our other disruptive properties include 120 kilopascals of sheer strength. Again, that's equivalent to one inch tile supporting 15 pounds vertically, six one inch tiles pulling a car, or my pinky holding up that full bottle of wine earlier. And we're extremely versatile. We truly are the next industrial Velcro. You can use us in any barometric environment. So here in this room, in atmospheric pressure, a nitrogen box, hydrogen box, or a vacuum chamber. And yes, if you can use it in vacuum, you can use us in space. And you can reuse us over 120,000 times, like I mentioned earlier, making it a sustainable solution. There was no force needed to attach nor detach. You saw the milliseconds engage and disengage, leaving no surface residue or marring left behind. So why now? Gecko Materials was spun out of my PhD in which I was able to unlock and patent the mass production methods and techniques. Gecko Materials holds its exclusive license and patents here on Earth as well as in space to the mass manufacturing. Traditionally, it took over 48 hours to make one single unit. After my invention, we are able to uh, produce Gecko Materials in under 15 minutes for multiple units now and we manufacture the same ultra-strong, highly reusable, zero-energy directional dry adhesive. Let's zoom in and slow down what you're seeing. A hair on your head is 100 microns. One one-hundredth of a hair on your head engages with the surface and is pulled in shear to create an extremely strong force, namely the van der Waals force. You'll notice uniform loading, and more importantly, uniform disengagement and unloading. Other companies claim Gecko, but are actually octopus-inspired. So again, remember, the gecko's ability to climb up smooth vertical surfaces is hairs that pull in shear and disengage in shear. Other companies say gecko, actually octopus, you saw those micro suctions on the right-hand side of the screen, they come off one at a time, they fracture, leave you debris behind. You can't use suction in vacuum or in space. Gabby, can you go forward? So let's look at gecko materials in a use case. For a robot arm, you're gonna put gecko materials on the end of the robot arm, and you're gonna rate your gripper to the largest, most mass object. And anything smaller and lighter, you can pick up using that same end effector. Here, we're increasing our weight, going one by one. And on the right-hand side of the screen, yes, that is another rotten tomato and an egg. Because there is no normal force, there's no fracturing, we can handle very delicate objects, even solar panels, fine glasses, semiconductor dice pieces and parts, as well as Yes, rotten tomatoes and eggs. So we are the next industrial Velcro, but we're staying very focused on our immediate go-to-market strategy, and that's threefold. Pick-and-place robots, drones, and space. For pick-and-place, automotive and semiconductors, drones, public and private, space, public and private. 
Because of our disruptable tech and our focus on this go-to-market strategy, we've had the blessing to sell to some really cool customers, Honda, Ford, Toyota, GE, Intel, uh, Samsung, just to name a few. We're currently on the International Space Station. We did 727,000 in revenue in 2023, and we're on track to doubling our revenue this year. We've sold and shipped product every week for the past two years. With our current paying customers alone, we're going to reach 75 million ARR, with 88% profit margins. Today, we're currently at 81% profit margins. We are poised with a small but mighty team that can bring gecko materials to the masses. I was the inventor of the metal mold, and I did whole life cycle sustainability, mass production, and scaling in my PhD. Mark Kokoski, who's my PhD advisor, is now the technical advisor for gecko materials, and he is also the inventor of biomimicry over 20 years ago. The rest of our team complements our extremely technical skill set. We're super excited to get Gecko Materials in your hands, so stop by our booth, E1. We'd love to help you save energy, time, and money. We are currently closing a round right now, and so we would love to chat with investors. We have a small allocation for strategic investors, and we're super excited to partner with you in sustainable innovation. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Gecko Materials. Uh, can we put it into the hands of the judges? You yes. You want to try it out? Yes, yes. So again, you're going to just place it down over here, please, pick please it up with your pinky, it. and then turn it over to, uh, to release. All right, while you're checking it out, judges, does anyone have a question to start us off? Yeah, why don't I start it off? So thank you very much, and congratulations on such a breakthrough. So what keeps you up at night, right? You have a cool technology, you are... Uh, differentiated, there's a lot of possible applications. So what, sh what are you worried about? What keeps you up at night? Oh, what keeps me up at night? Actually, I mean, I work so hard, we're really scaling so quickly. When I hit the pillow, I fall asleep, to be quite honest. <laughs> I am very excited for the few hours of sleep I get at night. Um, but the, what I see and what I'm excited about is having enough um, manpower to go to all our customers and really interface with them. And so we're increasing our sales team and our engineering here in Silicon Valley. And of course, they require a decent amount of pay, so that's why we're fundraising. Uh, but just getting that right, excitable talent to really grasp Gecko materials and then share it with the masses. So, yes, thank you for your question. You mentioned you have a small but mighty team, and it's, you have done a lot, obviously. Um, how do you prioritize and develop a more efficient go-to-market motion? Uh, who are the sort of uh, ICP, uh, you mentioned Ford, you mentioned Honda, within uh, which group within the, uh, the organization, who are the key decision makers? Can you kind of walk through that go-to-market motion for us? Yes, of course. So we're first um, starting off with, with the automotive and the semiconductor companies is reaching out to their R&D divisions. So we integrate with the R&D divisions first and they put it on initial prototypes, things like that. And then they'll do a line of uh, a pilot line as they call it. And then through that pilot line, then it will go into full production. So I was actually just at GM. I hope I can say this on stage. Uh, I was at the, I think so. I was just at GM visiting in Detroit and I met with the head of R&D and the head of integration for their robotics assembly line. And they had a pain point and problem, which I'm not going to, you know, say that publicly. Um, but you they were super excited. We were, <laughs> we were able to uh, address that pain point and problem. So we're quickly going through their R&D division first. They're going to do some prototyping, some, um, again, like the prototyping that you see here is a 3D printed part, but we're, again, raising to make this more high fidelity. And then we're moving this high fidelity to a robotic arm. And then that robotic arm will be put on the pilot line and then that pilot line will then go through the full um, and then every other uh, manufacturing facility that they have. I have a question with respect to the category that you're in. You said you're part of the adhesive market and I, I wonder if that's the right way to really position your company because even in comparing yourself to Velcro, I'm thinking about a fairly low margin business um, comparing you with glue and tape, right? And it sounds like the use case is actually much more technical. And so one, one piece of feedback, it's not really a question is, maybe it is a question like, is there a better category to really consider versus something like adhesives? That's the billion dollar question for our soon to be multi-billion dollar company. We will be a household name, Gecko. So right now it's just getting it in people's hands to walk them through and understanding the reusability aspect because you're, 
extremely but is it even that. really a consumer company right like oh. some of the things that you're seeing here seem a little bit more enterprise and could be potentially more high margin as a result Yes. So yeah, we're at currently at 88% profit margin. So to not cannibalize future paying customers, we will be rolling out additional uh, backings and, and things like that in generation. So then we can cut costs down there. So I met with the CTO of Samsung and they're super excited about putting it in their electronic division. But I'm trying, I steered the conversation during our meeting to go, okay, now that like TSMC and Intel are using it on their manufacturing line, why don't we first have that conversation and then in the future bring it to your electronics team. But they're already starting to do testing in R&D at Samsung, and so that will integrate. Um, again, I was like, how much can I say about this being too? All the NDAs are running through my head. Um, but eventually, I do want to be a household name. Hey, honey, can you go to the supermarket, pick up some Gecko materials we've run out? And so, yes, you can use it at home. You can attach. We can replace command strips. You know, eventually, it's the price per unit um, that you're looking at. We're only actually 10 times more expensive than a command strip, but you can use those over 120,000 times. So we're fractions of pennies per use. You don't need a lot to do a lot. Uh, that sort of gets to my question, which was, you, I think you kind of answered it when in the future state of where you want to go with the product, but what is the, like, the product packaging today? What do you charge these customers for? Is it rolls of this material? Is it a project? Is it come with services? What is the unit? Great question. So we currently sell a unit, which is 11 square inches online. You can buy it with credit card. It's super easy. And we ship units. Again, it's to, it's through the educational piece of how you ship it to your customers. So we show them that you actually cut it and you want smaller. Like with this, um, this gripper here, those are four one inch tiles. That, yes, we could have put you know, two huge pieces on, but actually you're gonna get more gripping power with individual tiles than the overall one sheet. So it's again, sold in sheets to kind of encourage that cutting up and that smaller piece size. You don't need a lot to do a lot. We're trying to really make sustainability our main priority, helping customers save energy, time, and money. Um, and then to your other question about... Like, do you sell services around that with your customers that you have today? Do you sell them that unit and then they have to go attach it and figure out how to use it? Or do you say, we'll guarantee the replacement of it and we'll maintain this robot for you for this additional cost? Price. Yeah, great question. So we just sell and ship. We also do scopes of works and engineering application hours. So we do have kind of an SOW work in which, uh, for example, GE does that. So they have a serv certain amount of adhesive they buy per year and a certain amount of hours that we support them. And then a certain amount of hours that we are indeed in-house in our facilities. So we do support. And so we'll interface with their engineers as they're designing. But also with this round of fundraising, what we're really focusing on is our application engineering, making these in House. So we'll make this a high fidelity gripper. So it'll be made out of metal. We'll have CAD files and videos to show them how to put it in themselves, how to exchange it themselves. Because again, we're trying to make manufacturing be more sustainable and local for all. So if they can make it themselves, we send them the gecko materials. They can replace it themselves. They don't have to have someone come out and do it for them. So that is like the vision. So yes, we are trending. We have application engineers in which we charge like per hour. And then we do have like mini projects that we customize. But it's always going to be, okay, as soon as we get the custom down for what the adhesive needs, this is your replacement size, and we just ship you every year your replacement. Because right now what you're seeing in, in grippers is three to six months replacements, and we're pushing our customers six months to a year replacement. When, when you think about the use cases, startups often win because they really focus and they find something that's very repeatable for a large amount of customers. What are the most repeatable use cases in either an industrial setting or a home setting that you, you see it? Yes, so that'll be automotive and the semiconductor industry. So we're working with the top semiconductor who manufactures for TSMC, Samsung, Intel, and other folks around uh, the world, actually, but they're here located in the U.S. And so what we're doing is we're getting on that high chain. So we can hit the robotic chain at like the three main levels, but we're getting at the highest one to help integration. So as, you know, Intel is building their new facilities here in the U.S. and, and other folks and other uh, semiconductor people are building here, they have this kind of new robot that is more energy efficient. We replace suction airline and vacuum dependencies. And that's where we're hitting, again, with that GM. It was shocking. When I went into the meeting, I was talking to the guy who was on the R&D 
division, and then he moved to head of the integration team, he was like, oh my gosh, yeah, we can't handle this. And I was like, oh, that is so easy. Like, it is bread and butter for us. So we are already on that track and we're super excited. So that's where we're seeing the most amount of excitement is the pick and place automotive and uh, semiconductors. And then there's other automotive or robotics, like, you know, I can handle fruits and vegetables. So we are working with some farmers in that sense. Uh, but what we're really seeing beachheads are those and the the space industry is the next beachhead. We are the next space Velcro because you can attach and detach us in space, making ISAM in space servicing, assembly, and manufacturing more sustainable for the future of space. All right, we are out of time. So please give it up for Gecko Material. Thank you. Thank you. Also, gonna give the wine bottle to somebody? Yep. <laughs> Just give us a second to reset the stage. Judges, did you like that? Was that cool? I wanted, I wanted to be uh, a volunteer to scale the wall. You know, I thought that was the demo we were going to do. I think we can make that happen. You <laughs> want, let's bring them back out. Let's try it.